Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. So welcome to my office once again here in my home. So our bishop has asked all clergy to model proper distancing and the wearing of face masks. So that's why I got to watch me take it off. So today we'll celebrate morning prayer for the sixth Sunday of Easter. As always, if you have a prayer book, you may follow along. And we begin on page 80. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The Pasha Nostrum, Christ our Passover, is on page 83. Please join me. Alleluia. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Pardon me. So our psalm this morning is Psalm 66. We'll be chanting verses 7 through 18, and it may be found on page 674 in the Book of Common Prayer. Bless our God, you peoples, make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. For you, O God, have proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the snare. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows, which I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you sacrifices of fat beasts with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. I called out to him with my mouth, and his praise was on my tongue. If I had found evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth God has heard me, he has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not rejected my prayer nor withheld his love from me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. 
From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The Word of the Lord. Please join me in reading together Canticle 16, the Canticle of Zechariah, found on page 92. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. So our second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 13, verses 13 to 22. A reading from the first epistle of Peter. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated, but in your heart sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear, so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and who is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading together Canticle 21, Te Diem Laudamus, found on page 95. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. 
you overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Our gospel this morning is from the gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 15 to 21. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have come have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The Gospel of the Lord. So the Gospel passage we heard last Sunday and the Gospel passage we heard today are from what's known as the Farewell Discourse, and it takes place in the upper room on the night on which Jesus was arrested. Jesus had washed the feet of the disciples and told them that they were to do the same for each other. He wanted them to understand that they're to serve others. And then Jesus began to explain his relationship to God the Father. And he kept trying to explain to the disciples that he would be leaving them. He wanted them to know that he would not leave them orphaned. He was going to the Father, and he would ask the Father to send an advocate. And this passage gets us ready for the Ascension, which we will celebrate on Thursday, and for Pentecost, the birthday of the Church, the day of the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Advocate. So at the beginning of this passage, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus and his disciples were Jews, and they kept Torah and the Ten Commandments, though at times they were criticized by the Pharisees and the scribes and other religious authorities for not keeping the commandments in the exact manner in which they did so. When questioned about which commandment was the most important, Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. So, we know which commandments Jesus thought were the most important. But since Jesus said that if we love him, we will keep his commandments, what are the commandments of Jesus? When he began his ministry, after his baptism and his time in the wilderness, he began to preach and said, Repent, because the reign of God is closing in. Repentance means to turn, to turn away from evil and to turn towards God. Repentance is a change of mind and heart in which we decide to follow God's way instead of our own way. We repent because we love Jesus and we want to follow his way. We want to keep his commandments. Jesus' next commandment is follow me. When Jesus first began to preach, he commanded people to repent and to follow him. And we follow Jesus when we keep his commandments. For those of us who follow Jesus and keep his commandments, his next commandment is rejoice. Even when things are difficult, when people say terrible things about us, we are to rejoice because our reward in heaven will be great. We can also rejoice because we know we are doing what Jesus wants of us. Jesus commands us to love our enemies. He said, Love your enemies and pray for your persecutors. You'll then become the children of your Father in heaven. God causes the sun to rise on both the bad and the good, and sends rain on both the just and the unjust. Tell me, if you love those who love you, why should you be commend commended for that? Even the toll collectors do as much, don't they? This can be a difficult commandment, because human nature 
is to hate our enemies. We want terrible things to happen to our enemies. But Jesus commands us to love our enemies and to do good to those who hurt us. And when we're angry with each other, Jesus commands us to reconcile with each other. These are difficult things, so we don't want to always live up to that ideal. But Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to help us with these difficulties. Jesus commands us to love our enemies and to be generous. He said, you are to be unstinting in your generosity in the way your Heavenly Father's generosity is unstinting. That's another commandment that can seem difficult at times. Jesus commands us not to judge each other. He said, don't pass judgment so you won't be judged. Don't forget the judgment you hand out will be the judgment you get back. And the standard you apply will be the standard applied to you. Why do you notice the sliver in your friend's eye but overlook the timber in your own? How can you say to your friend, let me get the sliver out of your eye when there is a timber in your own? You phony, take First take the timber out of your own eye, and then you'll see well enough to remove the sliver from your friend's eye. Jesus commands us to forgive each other. Not seven times, but seventy times seven times. And he reminds us that we're to treat people in the ways we want them to treat us. Jesus also commanded us that if we want to follow him, we're to deny ourselves and to take up our cross every day. Jesus commands us to care for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the prisoner, and the stranger. In the parable of the final judgment, Jesus said that when we feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the foreigner, clothe the naked, care for the sick, and visit the prisoner, when we do this for the most inconspicuous members of humanity, we do it for him, and we will receive the blessing of the Father. We are commanded to serve each other. For if we are to be first in heaven, we must be the servant of all. He commands us not to covet and desire material possessions. Jesus said, watch out, guard against greed in all forms. After all, possessions, even in abundance, do not guarantee someone life. And Jesus commands us to be fearless. We are not to be afraid. We are not to be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. When he appeared to the women after his resurrection, he said, Do not be afraid. And he told his disciples at his ascension, Remember, I am with you, day in, day out, as long as the world continues its course. That is a promise we can remember and which can bring us solace. During this time of lockdown, it's important to remember the promise we heard in today's gospel passage. Jesus said, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. So, even though you may be feeling isolated and alone, Jesus is with you. Jesus is with us. God is with us. The Holy Spirit is with us. We can get through this period because we love Jesus and we keep his commandments and because Jesus is with us. And because Jesus is with us, we can be fearless. We have no reason to be afraid. When people try to fill us with fear, we can reject their attempts because Jesus has commanded us to be fearless. Finally, Jesus commands us to make disciples, to tell others about God's unconditional love for everyone. We're to tell others that our sins are forgiven and that we are to work to bring about the reign of God. So, let us follow the commandments of Jesus, because we love him and follow him, and we want to bring about the reign of God. So let us continue on page 96 with the Apostles' Creed. And we'll chant it in that monotone like we've been doing every week. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Pardon me. We continue with Suffrage A, found on page 97. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And this collect is the collect in time of great sickness and mortality from the 1928 Book of Common Prayer. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee unto thee for succor. Deliver us, we beseech thee, from our peril. Give strength and skill to those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure. And grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom which leads into eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. So at this time, invite your intercessions and thanksgivings. We continue to pray for those who have the coronavirus and those who have died due to complications from COVID-19. We pray for all of us in our homes and for those who must leave their homes to work, that they be safe. We pray for those around the world who are sick and frightened. We pray for those who are unable to work as their jobs have been suspended. We pray for those who are worried about food and paying the rent or mortgage. We pray that everyone will be relieved of their anxieties and worries. And we will say the litany in a time of virus, fear and economic collapse. Almighty God, we pray for those who have died of the coronavirus, for those who are sick and for those who are afraid of getting sick. Be the shepherd of your people, O Lord, we pray. In the midst of such uncertainty, we wonder how to keep ourselves, our families, our companies, and our churches afloat in the time of economic meltdown. We ask you to protect us all. We pray for the millions who are laid off from work and for those who must continue to work because they provide essential services or cannot otherwise feed their children. Give us today our daily bread. We pray for the first responders, doctors, and nurses, and all who work in health care. We pray for all who are confined to hospitals, nursing homes, and institutions, and for family members who are not allowed to visit. We pray for those who are responsible for public health decisions, that they will be guided by science and duty, not ideology or politics. You are the greatest healer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy on our public officials Guide them to create appropriate policies. Give them wisdom and good judgment. Help them put humanity first, that the people may follow their guidelines and take into account the safety of everyone in all we do. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, help us guide our children and our parents through this emergency with cheerfulness, optimism, and faith. Help us to lay aside our fears and to focus on the needs of others. Where we can be helpful, let us act on their behalf, even if only from a distance. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. We turn to you, O Lord, for we have no other help and we know you are sufficient. You are the very power of love, of health and healing, of protection and mercy. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Amen. Let us continue with the general thanksgiving found on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Please join me. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life and above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. I always like to include the prayer of St. Chrysostom, found on page 102. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, stay safe. Keep washing your hands. Don't touch your face. Shelter in place. And uh, continue to pray. And we'll get together again next Sunday, the Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise.